In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, uh, we answer questions asked by listeners and viewers like you. Most of them are related to fitness and health. We are fitness and health. Sometimes they're not. Experts. Now, the way we open this episode is with an introductory portion where we talk about current events and studies. That part lasted 40 minutes. If you just want to get to the fitness stuff where we answer fitness questions, fast forward about 40 minutes ahead. But if you like to have fun, you want to hear current events um, and be entertained, tune in to the very beginning. Nonetheless, I'm going to give you a full breakdown of this whole episode. So we open up by talking about my favorite super stack for mental clarity, concentration, and euphoria. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's caffeine, theanine, and I like to combine it with NED, hemp oil extract, which is high in CBD, but other cannabinoids as well. If you want to try it out, or if you just want to try hemp oil extract to give you more relaxation or help you with anxiety or help you with sleep, use our discount. We give you 15% off. Here's what you do. Just go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. Get 15% off your first order. Then we talked about one of our favorite cult classic movies, They Live. It seems to be a little relevant uh, yeah. to today. So yeah, it's, it's reflective. It's a good time. Then we talked about Microsoft and their attempts to buy TikTok uh, to prevent it from being banned in America. Then we talked about the Major League Baseball and National Basketball Association league ratings. Uh, so sports are back on the table, um, but not a lot of people seem to be watching them based off of previous seasons. Very interesting. So what's going on? Then I talked about a study talking about uh, sunscreen chemicals, common chemicals found in your sunscreen. It seems that they build up at very unhealthy levels, far above what the FDA deems to be healthy. So you might want to avoid those and go mm. with the natural stuff. Watch out, Casper people. Then Justin talks about uh, cereal. Oh, I'm sorry. Adam talked about cereal and how Justin tried to steal all the Magic Spoon cereal. So Magic Spoon cereal is sugar-free, high-protein cereal that tastes like the cereal you enjoyed as a kid. No joke. They got flavors like peanut butter, uh, fruity flavors, blueberry, birthday cake. Uh, I know they got strawberry and peaches and cream coming out. So this cereal tastes amazing. No sugar, high in protein, and it's whey protein. So it's a fun snack you can eat and get your protein intake up. Um, and because uh, you're listening to Mind Pump, of course we got a hookup for you. Here's what you do. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash mind pump. Automatically, you'll get a discount. Use the code mind pump. And by the way, if you don't like it at all, even if you finish the whole box, you're going to like it, Sal. You'll get, a free, you'll get a full refund. Then we talked about Google's career certificates and if that spreads, how that's going to affect uh, formal education. We talked about how fitness improves or at least causes personal growth to happen on accident. That's really cool. And then we talked about the Hard Gainer webinar that's happening this week. If you're somebody that has a real tough time building muscle and strength, male or female, if you think your body builds muscle slower than everybody around you, if you have a really fast metabolism, or when you increase your calories, all you do is just get fatter, don't gain any muscle or strength, you need to watch this webinar. I break everything down. I talk about training for the Hard Gainer, the specific things you need to do to get your body to respond. And by the way, I've never worked with a Hard Gainer that I couldn't get to build muscle. The webinar is totally free. Just go to hardgainerwebinar.com. So that was the first 40 minutes. Then we get into the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know if it's possible to gain muscle at the age of 40 or over. The next question. There's hope. This person wants to know what we think of push, pull, and leg split routines. The third question. This person wants to know our thoughts on the statement. You can't judge someone's health by looking at them. And then the final question, this person just wants to know how we set these episodes up, how we pick the questions, and how we prep for them. And by the way, if you want to ask us a question that we can answer in these episodes, listen to that part because I give you all the instructions. Also, it's August, uh, right in the middle of summer, and that means it, there's a new promotion. So this month, the program that is 50% off is MAPS. Performance. Now, MAPS performance, the goal of MAPS performance is to build muscle, burn body fat, but to do so in a more athletic way. So the exercises are different. The movements improve mobility. They get you to move faster. They give you more lateral stability. They give you the kind of strength that you can translate to the real world, not just fast and loose, Sal. Not just in the gym. 
There are special mobility sessions in math performance that you don't find in any other math program. And it's phased like other math programs. It's a long program, fully blueprints, everything you need to follow the workout. There's exercise demos. Everything is in there. Oh, and by the way, if you're working out at home or you have limited equipment, we have now added a mod that allows you to follow the full program with just a pair of dumbbells. That's it. You don't need anything else. Just a pair of dumbbells. You can follow the whole MAPS performance program. Again, it's 50% off. Here's how you get that half-off discount. Go to mapsgreen.com. That's M-A-P-S-G-R-E-E-N.com and use the code GREEN50. That's G-R-E-E-N-5-0, no space, for the discount. And it's T-shirt time. Ah, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. We have f- yeah. seven winners. Wow. We got three for Apple Podcasts, four for Facebook. The winners for Apple Podcasts are Sweet Spot 12, Justy Lynn, and In My Cole World for Facebook, we have Jennifer Ann Buckman, Giacomo Poggi, Ashley Hoffman, and Stuart Bruce. All of you are winners. Yeah, Stuart. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. Oh, I feel good. Good. Yeah, I do. I feel really good. Yeah. You know what I did this morning that I haven't done in a while? What? Best uh, combination ever. And, you know, sometimes I, I, I... Forget something and re- remember it again, try it again, and I'm like, ah, this is one of those times. Yeah. So I go caffeine, right? Mm-hmm. Caffeine and theanine, great combination. Yes. This is in studies, by the way. If you if you combine your caffeine with the amino acid theanine, you will have a better, more euphoric focused experience. It's more drawn out too, which I've Lasts longer. Yeah. This is well documented. Uh, this is a real thing. Here's one more thing you can do. If you feel like uh, you want to become superhuman, uh, you combine <laughs> it, combine it with uh, cannabinoids. So I took Ned this yes. morning. I did a, a, a dropper full of Ned, coffee, theanine. You're describing fire. like my my total routine. Fi- do you do it every time now? Y- yes, it's every time. Every time, every time I-, I have a nitro, especially like I, you know, I want to I want to ride that as long as possible. And keep it so I don't get too jacked up and too uh, jittery. Uh, so like adding those those together is like a beautiful. Combo. I find it. Yeah, I find it gets rid of the jitters and it also eliminates the hard crash. Right? Yes, so, that's the big one. So a lot of times you get, especially when you do something strong like nitro or you do like a pre workout. Yeah, you get this great you know high for your workout, but then there's this you know hour two hours later this like hard crash. When you got me on the theanine and I've also done that with the Ned. It doesn't. It doesn't seem to peak with the jitteriness. It just you have a nice high, and then it seems like it is like mellow, and then there's no drop off. Dude, just kind I'm of telling even. you, if, if you want to have uh, like a, you want to go into a business meeting, or you want to write something, or mm-hmm. you just want to be creative, uh, try that combination. Yeah. It's sharp and awake. It's 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 pretty wild, and I know there's coffee companies that are trying to combine CBD with coffee now yeah. it's disgusting the way they do it yeah, yeah. yeah. have you tried those <laughs> yes I, I, I have i've had a few of those cans you can get them at like whole foods but it's just like they have not mastered it yet no. this is a much better option now just do the just do the yeah, you put extract. it in your mouth yeah you put it in your so you when you do it you're supposed to leave it under your tongue for like a minute so I, you put it under your tongue for like a minute then you wash it down like i don't want my whole coffee tasting like cbd Right, I'm not at like that. I've tried those too, Justin. They're garbage. Like, yeah. I'd rather you have one swig with it, then it's good. Then, then the you're rest. done. Yeah, and then you're done. Then now the you have coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know it. what I mean. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, great feeling, and it lasts a long time, and it's smooth, and it's uh, euphoric is the best way I can describe it. Because caffeine will get you up, but not always euphoric. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? That, yeah. that, that happy, good feeling. Hey, speaking of writing, how's the uh, how's the book coming along, man? Oh, good. Oh, I know. We don't hear from. Yeah, it we while. don't uh, we don't talk too much about it. It's and because you- it's a tell all book about you guys. So I don't want to <laughs> tell you guys. Oh, too much. Yeah. It's a lot of secrets. and Okay. It's all just <laughs> yeah. going to come out yeah. later. I, we'll find out. I'm... I know you guys love me no matter what. So <laughs> just, it's all good. Hey, what a conflicted <laughs> feeling that would Man. be. Sal sells like a million fucking books, but then it's like shit talking about us. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah we're rich. These, oh, these fucking yeah. asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just totally used it yeah. the whole yeah, time. Yeah. I'd feel so conflicted about Did that. Did you read the part about Justin clipping his toenails the, while they podcast? Disgusting. Yeah. 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 He's a beast. Dude, there's that movie, uh, Justin, they live. Yes. Tell me that that's not 
I, I told relevant you I, today. Oh my god! What is, saw, what is that? I started watching it. It had to be like so late eighties, like early nineties, total uh, ish. But yeah, it, it, this was like a, one of those. Side What's your problem? Sci-fi movies that had Rowdy Rowdy Piper in it, you know. So it's like, oh, you mean the glasses? Yeah, that he one? puts the glasses. Oh like, God, he, he sees these almost like zombified, like alien uh, people that have been taking over, basically right in front of everybody. I and so, watched that in years. yeah, the the classic, uh, like I, I was, I, I was uh, chewing bubble gum and kicking ass, but I ran all out of uh, bubble. No, gum. no, he says, no, how's it go? I Fuck. came, I came here to do two things: yes, chew bubble gum you. and kick ass. Thank you. Yeah, I'm all, out of, I'm all out. I'm all. I'm bad at quotes. <laughs> so it's a, it's a. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cult classic, yeah. uh, so it's not obviously it was made in the late '80s, so it's a little bit cheesy. The special effects aren't the greatest. It's like rad. One of the best yeah. fight scenes of any movie ever. Not yeah. because it's like Jackie Chan kung fu, whatever, yeah. but rather because okay. it looks like they beat the shit out of each other. There you know? it is. Like like a real fight. There's a, there so it is there. so my comparison is, and I know whatever you know you can conspiracy theory me all day long. This is like the uncovering of all those fucking sick pedos. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm it's like you know put the eyes oh you were one too look at you yeah so essentially you know it's okay if I ruin the the, the plot by the way but he yeah. he finds these glasses puts them on and then as he's walking the streets he sees people look really freaking like weird it's like disturbing and he can't figure out what the hell's going on and so that's pretty much it I won't say much else but uh, you know there's these like aliens that are taking over the but my favorite part is when he puts on the the, the glasses. And he's, I think he's driving or he's walking, and he, uh, he sees the billboards, mm -hmm. and billboards are normally like, oh, Coca Cola, whatever. Yeah. But instead, it says consume, consume, yeah, yeah. <laughs> obey, obey, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he's like, what the hell? Yeah, <laughs> it's such a great. I can't believe you guys reflective. remember the details of that. I mean, I've watched that for sure a couple times as a kid, but I can't remember for the life of me like the details of it like that. I know. Dude, I've seen so, it. Sal's just, you know, he has that ability. I've yeah. seen it. No, I've seen it a good, a good ten times. Uh, yeah. It was I was great movie when I was younger. I think I watched it first when I was like fourteen, yeah. and I thought it was awesome. Yeah. And then later I watched it as an adult, and then I feel like it's so relevant today. Yeah. Courtney makes fun of me for that kind of stuff. So she, I'm like, because it's cheesy, you know. And it's like uh, it's like we we grew up with Predator, and we grew up with like all these like Commando and like stuff that's like really cheesy, but like awesome. You know, this is one of those movies. Dude, you just wait till your kid. Your kids are like. 15, 16, when it's okay for them to watch some of these movies. Yeah. Because now I get to sit down with my son. Yeah. That, and, that's some serious bonding. Oh, dude. We watched Fight Club. So he'd never seen Fight Club. What? Right? And it's a, now he's 15 now, so I can watch it with him. Yes. Right? And, uh, I, you know, I love watching. Remember the first time you watched Fight Club at the very end where you're like, oh, shit, right? Yeah. That was my son. Uh, as we're watching it, first off, as And then you go back and you see all these little blurbs of, uh, yeah. He caught on to it right away. He saw that. Right, first, right away. As we're, wow. I didn't say anything to him. As we're watching, he goes, why is it, why is there a guy flashing oh, in that's the legit. screen? And I'm like, oh, I didn't notice that. <laughs> I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to play oh, downplay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we watched Alien, uh, the first Alien. Next is going to be Total Recall. I've already seen Predator with him. <laughs> Classic. Ah, oh, it's a good, it's a good, I get to watch him again. I know. It's like, great that he's, he actually like him too. He does. Oh, that's good. He likes he likes him for the same reasons I did, which really, you know, it's just, you know, it's like, cool, you you are my kid. As I say, it's like he's your son, huh? Yeah, because if he didn't, I'd have to, I'd be like, we're going to do a blood test because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This Wait, is all weird. What do you guys what do you guys think about uh, Trump banning TikTok? Oh, dude. Oh, yeah. And See, I, I don't know, man. I had this feeling that, uh, especially with the military already, like, uh, you know, restricting uh, anybody there from using it. I'm like, this is only a matter of time before the general public. I'm sure they're going to crack down. And the only way out of that is if an uh, American company buys it. And I know that Microsoft is bidding for it right now. Oh, are they? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, well, that's Oh, you good. didn't know that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's the, that's, the one, that's the one way it won't get banned in the U.S. is if an American company buys it. It and and right now, you've got uh, Microsoft that's bidding for it, which is uh, interesting in itself too. Because we talk about you know that we just had that big hearing for all the big tech companies. I did. Yeah. Obviously, Microsoft wasn't involved with that because they don't do things like all these social media platforms. Yeah, they they will have the data. Did they, you see when they were data. asking them all? They're like, so um, are you are you aware that China you know copies yes. and 
infringes on copyright and, and all of them were like oh no oh, that's yeah, not personal experience yeah i'm not yeah. aware i, I yeah, no i've never seen that. it and then they get to zuckerberg and zuckerberg's yeah. like yeah that happens yeah. a china lot. steals <laughs> <laughs> they stole things yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably, it's documented probably because facebook's banned in china yeah <laughs> exactly. i'm pretty sure you know what so here there's two different ways to look at this one way is to say well yeah it tiktok is being used to collect information on people that are up through a backdoor way of, of taking advantage of the fact that we have open markets that were relative, definitely very free compared to them. And so Communist China has this social media thing. Now they can have all this information. The other way to look at it is that Trump is using China fears to turn a company into an American company. You know what I'm saying? So there's oh, yeah. there's both angles, I guess. I feel I, that's what I text you. I totally. feel like this is another uh, maneuver by him, like what he did with the tariffs and stuff like that. It's like a flex to get something else that he wants. That's what I feel like is well, happening. Like he's threatening to ban it. Yeah, it could yeah. Be, definitely be a motivation unless you make it American, yeah. which is oh, I don't know how you feel, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Freedom yeah. fries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, dude. So I read this article about I don't watch uh, sports, but. Uh, this oh, is kind of God. big news right You're now. You're going to bring up the NBA. Well, both M NBA and the MLB are, they've had a few games now, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I read an article that it listed how many viewers watched the opening games, mm. and then it listed how many viewers came back to watch more. Mm -hmm. And the ratings were, first off, underwhelming with how many were supposed to show up, considering there's been no sports. Nobody's doing anything. Yeah, you'd think there'd be a frenzy. They expected like more people. Still, the, the initial numbers seemed to be good, but just underperform what they expected. But the ratings dropped considerably after that first game. Um, what are your what, what are your beliefs? Because I, you know, part of me is like, well, there's no fans. They went no too crowd. hard on the political there's, side. Right? Very is that hard, what you think it is? I, I, they went way especially the NBA versus uh, the MLB. Like you just don't see as much of uh, the you know what they're trying to promote. They went way hard on the political. Did side. they really? They did, and that's why you think a lot of people turned it off. I mean, that's why my friends that are on the conservative side of the fence did. Mm. I mean, I've got four or five buddies that yeah. all we're all into sport. We were all in fantasy leagues together. We all talk sports when we were all excited for it to start up, and it was just a little heavy on that side more than I think anybody. And I think we all anticipated it to be a little bit, which I think was okay. But right, they went they NBA above every other uh, professional sport team or organization. Uh, they went harder than anybody else did, mm. and I think that's what turned off uh, a lot of viewers. Well, the NBA had the biggest drop, uh, bigger than the MLB, uh, and they and they were the hardest on it. And yeah. Everybody else, the, the MLB was second in line to that, and then you had other sports. Well, so. actually, I might be wrong. Check this out. So the LA, the the Lakers and Clippers. Three, this is the initial game, right? The opening. Uh, that was one of the opening games. Am I correct? Yes. Like, okay. It was the second of the opening. Games. The okay. first one was a Jazz game, which was earlier in the day, which is why that one was lower because. Well, one, it's also well, the, it's well, also Jazz and Pelicans, which is less <laughs> popular. Yeah. Those are two great. Don't get me wrong. Good teams, but yeah, less uh, popular. Well, so yeah. check this out. And this earlier. is this is the opening game, and I think they expected NBA Finals type numbers. When the finals are on, you're you're seeing five to six million viewers, is what I looked up. Yeah. Okay. So the opening was three point four million for Lakers Clippers, and two point one million for Pelican Jazz. Then when they came back and had the Celtics and Bucks and Ma and Mavs and Rockets, so those are all the next days. Went for, it went down to one point three and one point seven. Mm. So that's a huge that's a huge drop. Yeah, cut in half. Yeah, all, well, almost right. For ba for baseball, Yankees Nationals went was four point was four million, and the Dodgers Giants two point eight. That went down to uh, less than a million for the Mets and Braves, just a million for the Brewers and Cubs, and. Under eight hundred thousand wow, for the that's Angels a and the massive A's. drop, huge drop. Yeah, and so, but you know, there's a few factors I think we need to consider. Yeah. One is no crowd. That, well, first off, there were no sports for a while, so I, I think everybody expected huge audience. Well, but then there's no crowd. It's like, did they have those? Did they have those like yeah, no those energy. cardboard cutouts? Well, stuff? they actually did. The NBA did something really interesting. They had um, where the fans would be. They had a, a massive digital screen, and then there was what it looked like real people streaming in and then they had these massive speakers that were putting off the sound of like what a crowd would be now that that alone forget everything else did that 
make you feel like you were watching a normal game? I mean, yeah, no, it definitely it, very similar to what I said about the watching UFC. There's it, it feels a little pra practice esque. I mean, you can hear the guys on the court like talking to each other like that. Yeah. You couldn't ever hear that. Mm, the crowd would be so loud and everything. Yeah. yeah so, uh, you know, somebody who's played like you, you that's nice, right? To be able to talk to my players or my teammates and let them know, oh, back door, back door, you know, and, and things like that. You now get to hear that as a fan. So you can hear yeah. this, the the conversation or the, the, the yelling back and forth amongst teammates on the court. So it does give a different feel, and it just didn't quite have the same. And NBA is a sport of runs. The whole game is back and forth. Right, and right. There's a lot of runs that happen in, in the NBA. And I feel like it... it, it and what I'm re really curious to see, I told Katrina this, I was like, you know, I, I can't wait to see the numbers on points scored. Uh, my theory is that because the the crowd plays such a, a, a big factor with runs and excitement, mm. that we will see an at total scoring going I think, down. Going down. That's yeah. my oh, that's, that's my that's my theory. But we won't know that until we have enough games under our belt to like like see a real good right. snapshot. Okay. Well, so 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 there's that, and then the other side of it that I've been reading is people are saying that it was just too uh, too political or too politicized, yeah. which um, it, it could be that a lot of people disagreed with their stance or maybe a lot of people were like, I don't want to get yeah. my politics when I'm getting that's e Yeah, even if you agreed with it, it's just like it, you got bombarded with it. I mean, it's on the court. It's like the commercials. Like you just don't get a break from it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting that they decided to go so hard with it. Yeah, and you think that that – because a lot of people are saying that that's – Well, that's the reason why – that's the reason why I turned it off. I turned it off because it was too much. It was too much for me, and that was similar to my buddies that were watching. They all kind of felt the same way. It's like, listen, man, like, again, just like you said, I'm not against the, like, everyone has, is to their, to each their own. But when I watch sports, that's my time. I mean, I tease you all the time, right? That yeah. politics is sports for nerds. I don't want to now include my my politics yeah, with my sports. up our, uh, the experience. Yeah, I, I, wa I want to watch. I want to watch. You want to get away and have it's, fun. And an politics escape. is yeah. stressful. Yeah. yeah, so it's dude. like we, we get that enough in our Facebook well, feed. So there. that's yeah, that's just like, exactly on. what happened. So what it ended up doing is it sparked like so. I have these threads of like my my buddies that I grew up with that like that's that thread is like dedicated to good sports shit talking. Like right. that's all we do. Your team is playing. The other the other guys that are not the other two guys that are not fans of that team talking shit. Oh, what a terrible pass! Oh, LeBron. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, and it's and it's great fun for us. But it turned it. The, we stopped talking about the game, and it all of a sudden turned into all this political shit and sending articles back and forth. And it's like, yeah, because you have a mix of friends. You have friends that are conservative and friends that are very liberal. I have, yeah, I have, I have hard, I have hard left. I have hard right. I have kind of in the middle where I feel like I've kind of fall. And for me, it's like the, I want to separate those. I have, we have fun getting into political stuff, so we have our threads where we're talking politics, which is great. I think that's healthy especially when you have friends on both sides. I think that's a great way to dialogue. Mm -hmm. And then we have like our sports stuff, but it, it bled into our sports conversation. It's like, I don't want to talk about this stuff right now. Yeah, I want to, I want to talk about the game and, and talk about what we're seeing on the court. And I, that that's my reason. And here's another re reason why I think that uh, this is true is because look what happened with USC. USC had some record-breaking viewership on their their fight card and they, they was just, all about the fight yeah, right. just about the fight there so was, was no it. there was nothing nothing political in, in it whatsoever it was all about the sport and it crushed yeah and i think that they did they they went a little hard well, in that do you direction. think it was the players that were pressuring uh the organization a bit to kind of really promote uh you know the you know the, the political atmosphere i think there was both yeah yeah i think it was both i think the i think the the nba obviously i mean they i mean they painted the court they i'm sure they have some sort of say in some of the advertising and the commercials that come through i think it's a little bit of both i mean obviously what the players and the coaches do with Get, getting together and kneeling, that's on them. They decided right. to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't think the NBA said do it or don't do it. They they said they support whatever. So that the players made that that call and that decision. Uh, but I mean, uh, how they view it, or I mean, how they they shoot it and film it, what they what the announcers talk about, the commercials that are played. Like, I mean, I'm sure that that's well, a this collective is a decision. It, it's yeah. a it's a it's a market uh, based you know organization so th they're going to they're going to have to do what the <laughs> or or fail well, yeah. so we'll see if it continues that way cuz if if they keep getting 
crap of if it views. starts affecting paychecks all around it'd be interesting to see how they you know if they keep it going or pivot well here's on the flip side uh tom brady apparently was hitting golf balls in the woods got 5.8 million viewers yeah wow. so he got mo- he got far more viewers than the opening day yeah of both the the you know the other thing and is too and to you know when you talk about there's lots of other factors there is the the that like even myself being a, a, a huge sports fan and even bigger nba fan um, I had to, I was reminded by one of my good buddies that, you know, it was opening day coming back up because I've just, you know, the season to me, the season's over. And most fans that are, that are big NBA fans will put an asterisk by this season, no matter what, because yeah. it's already, there's, you know, yeah, we're way late. Already. Yeah. It's so late already. They're doing this kind of like, um, you know, quarter season real quick to get to the, to get to the playoffs. There's team like the Warriors are not even in, you won't see any Warriors playing basketball this year. They're already eliminated from that. So they eliminated like the bottom, I think 10 teams mm-hmm. are already eliminated from playing games right now anyway. Mm-hmm. So there's going to, there's, there's other factors, you know, so you gotta, you gotta think that if your team's one of the 10 teams that's not playing right now, those people are probably carved off right away. There's probably a bunch of people that are like, this is not even a real season. So even no matter who wins this championship, I'm not going to count it in my, in my book. Like, so there's there's other factors, you know. So we might be being deceived a little bit that oh, that's you know, one thing or another, right? That it's oh these you know two million people turned it off because it's political. Uh, I don't know. That's my experience with yeah. my group of friends that decided to not watch it. That was the reason being, but mm. that might not be everybody. You know, that might be that just because it's just a weird common time. sense though would say that with people thirsty for entertainment, thirsty for distraction, sports are excellent at that, right? Mm-hmm. There, people aren't really going anywhere. You know, you would think that 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 something as popular as the NBA and the MLB that you would have an explosion of viewership. Like you said, UFC had uh, record numbers, so it is interesting. I think we should keep watching to see what the what the market says yeah. and how they respond to it. Because here's the position they're in now: if the ratings continue to suck. Now the NBA is going to look like we're, they're in a between a hard a rock and a hard place. They're committed. Already. Like now it's like, oh, yeah. do we switch gear? Now we look bad. To no, they can't. The they they, they got to write it out. Yeah, they're committed now. They're com- they're committed to that. You, I think they would look worse if they w- they wavered the other way because then it looks like it was always like bullshit. They ba- yes, it was always bullshit. Yes. You were doing it just thinking that you were you you thought you were with the majority by by accepting or adopting all this. And then now you go, so they won't waver. They'll they'll stick it through. But what you might see is you maybe will see like back off a little bit on the the commercials, the advertising. Maybe uh, you know you'll hear less of the announcers. Maybe even how they shoot the game. Mm. Like they put a lot of tension on on the way they shot it. You know there was a lot of. I mean I've watched uh, the NBA for you know over two decades, and uh, I've ne- unless it's a championship game. You don't even normally even see the players for the national anthem. They don't normally right. shoot that. Yeah, but uh, it's just the experience you see as you're at the game. Yes. Yeah. But if you're a viewer on TV, yeah, they never televised. So yeah. this time it was focused on. That? Oh, oh yeah, mm-hmm. big time. So you know that's just. I mean, to me, that's like okay, that's different. That's definitely different. And they they're shooting. They have. They can very easily allow that support that let it happen but then not put all this emphasis on shooting it so we might see some subtle changes like that that's what i'll be interested to see if they try and do that like maybe not highlight it as much as they did it'll be interesting wow Hmm. well let's see what happens hey uh, i read an an interesting article about the chemicals that are found in sunscreen the common chemicals so Mm. you know how sunscreen uh prevents Sunburn, right? There, there are chemicals in there that absorb uh, the UV rays. That's what we hope is happening. Yeah, yeah and w- <laughs> well, there was a study that came out that showed that um, these chemicals accumulate at very high amounts in the body. So it goes. Uh, we, they, we were told that these some that these these particular chemicals don't accumulate to dangerous levels or cause issues. Well, now studies are showing that they accumulate at very high levels hmm. in the body. Here are the, the the ingredients, and you find this in most sunscreens. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing them right. One is uh, avobenzone, oxybenzone, uh, octocrylene, homocellate, uh, octocellate, and octanoxate. Hmm. And they found that they led Real to- natural items. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So they found that using these led to maximum plasma concentration rates ranging from 3.3 nanograms per milliliter to 258 
depending on um, you know the chemical and whether or not it was applied uh, between a lotion and skin. Now, here's the thing. The FDA says that it shouldn't go above 0.5. So on the low end, they found that it went up to 3. Wow. On the low end, anything above 0.5 is above the FDA safety threshold. Hmm. How crazy is that? Especially when you're just lathering it all over your body. Now, like now if that's what the FDA puts out there, what? how does something like that get through that's more than five times stronger than what it's allowed This to? was a recent study that came out that said, hey, it um, uh, th- th- looks like these are accumulating in the body. I think previous studies didn't look at this necessarily. Oh, maybe it was just like the initial. So the initial might be under 0.5, but it's it's bu- it builds up. Say you're on the beach for f- three days in a row, yeah. lathering up five times. And it goes way, way above the mm. FDA, what the FDA has deemed as safe. Now, I stopped using chemical sunscreens Crazy. a long time ago. I don't, I haven't used them in, in so years. So, what's what well, is the what is the safe alternative for someone like Justin who right now looks scared to death? About yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm mean like, oh shit, do I gotta look like that idiot guy with the zinc everywhere? Because I'm 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 trying out this astaxanthin thing and and like hoping for the best and to see if that actually has you know some kind of uh, uh, you know benefit to it, but. At the same time, I'm like, I have to put it on or I'm going to burn. Yeah, yeah. So so uh, zinc or titanium um, uh, are the are the safe alternatives. You don't want to get nanoparticulite, you know, not, uh, where they crush the zinc so small that actually absorbs in your skin. Hmm. Um, but those, those sunscreens are different because they don't absorb the UV rays. They reflect them out. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, the drawback is even the good ones, you're going to have a little bit of a white sheen to your body uh, when you put them on. But, dude, I would not mess with the chemical ones yeah. at all because when they accumulate in the body, they have hormonal uh, potential hormonal effects dude. on the body. Yeah. So, so ghosted out at the uh, beach. Dude, another, that's, that's the move. another product that has been used forever that we're now finding uh, d- a, 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 more harm than good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you left, uh, Sal, you left early last week, and so I don't think you saw this. Uh, I think Rachel posted the clip that I had sent over. But uh, I came in, or oh, this was, I think, Thursday late afternoon, um, getting ready to leave here, and I see that Magic Spoon has sent like two like massive cases that have like you know ten cases each of the uh, boxes of cereal in there. Oh, is this where you fucked with Justin? Yeah, and I go, no, he. I I come out there, and here's I see Justin walking out, fucking carrying this like handful of all the blueberry, and free, he went through all the cases and plucked all the blueberry His favorite flavor. Yeah, 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 all out of it, and le- leaves us with Fruity. the other flavors. <laughs> Sneaky. Justin. And I was telling Doug, I was like, this son of a bitch, right? We're going through it. <laughs> it's like he went and picked out all the good flavors. So I was like, oh, let me open up this other case and see what's in there. And then I opened the other case and it's full with peanut butter, which I, I know he's <laughs> still- got the gold, I know asshole. he still hasn't had the peanut butter one. I haven't even tasted it yet. I'm so <laughs> I mad. Said, I, said, I, said, I told Doug, I was like, ha, this asshole tried to go in and take everything. Yeah. He missed all Doug the- Doug said he almost ate like the whole box of it yeah. too. Yeah. You, one hey, sitting. Hey, what did you think of it, Doug? Did you oh, like that it? was great. Yeah, the peanut butter is fire, right? Uh, isn't that weird? There's no sugar in it, but it tastes the way it does. Oh man, it's, I couldn't stop. I just kept pour, pouring bowl after bowl. That's some yeah. magic uh, engineering. So aspect. you know that they have new flavors coming, right? What are they? Yeah, they have strawberry, and then what's the other one they have coming right now? And the strawberry is supposed to have like little chunks of strawberry in it. Oh, oh wait, didn't they say peaches and cream? I like Doug? strawberry. Wasn't that the other? Yeah, one? that's another one that's coming out. Oh, oh dude, well, good I'm man. I'm excited for next this week. Stuff. So I'm, now you guys do a roll. Uh, you guys do realize that by eating ten servings, you kind of <laughs> negate the you eliminate the benefit of eating a. Well, a you gotta really like figure out like how it tastes. Hey, that's and the not, texture. That's, you gotta get used to it. That's not necessarily true. Like I, I think I calculated out one day. Like, what if I ate this whole box? Like how it's not as bad as it's not like eating a bag of potato chips. That's for damn sure. What is it, like hundred grams of protein? Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty damn big serving of no, protein for dude, sure. That's so, too much. I mean, I already have more than one serving. I mean, what they put on cereal boxes, any cereal box, whether it's a you know quote unquote healthy or regular cereal, is always like who the fuck eats two thirds a cup? You know, what I'm saying a cereal like yeah. that. What kind of weak sauce yeah, shit is that? That's yeah. a tease. Yeah, when I was a kid and I would eat cereal, it was always a punch bowl. Yeah, yeah exactly. There was never, it was never in a bowl. It's the serving bowl. But it's imagine- the one you put popcorn in. Imagine when this- So one of my favorite cereals growing up was uh, Captain Crunch when they started to make the little strawberry freaking- uh, The Crunch Berries? Yes. Oh, really? I just so, like the So the imagine when the strawberry drops and you have peanut butter yeah. and you can sprinkle some of the strawberry Except you don't get the roof of your mouth tore up. Oh, I can't. Dude, that was the worst. I can't wait for Do you guys think that- happens because the Captain Crunch's like call to fame was the fact that it stayed 
crunchy and milk. Uh, so whatever they put in there, whatever chemical like shit storm. Sure ratted your mouth. Yeah, that they put in there also destroyed your gums and your teeth. I didn't even totally. I didn't even think about that. Is that the reason why it was like that? Because I, that's that, my guess. Yeah. That's a good call. It that, did stay crunchy. It, so that it must have been it. It did, it did. It stayed crunchy longer than other. It didn't get soggy. Yeah. But you know what's stupid about that? I broke up with a girlfriend over a soggy uh, cereal. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> yeah. What happened? I don't know. I was just frustrated because like sh- we were having this fight over the phone, and I just <laughs> made myself a bowl of cereal. Oh, no. And then it like like by the time we were like done fight, I was like, you know what? Like it's not worth it. I like hung up on her, and I just kept <laughs> eating my cereal. This relationship isn't worth a bowl yeah, of soggy cereal. That's how important it was for <laughs> me. Should junior high. Quote, that should be a quote yeah. right there. Yeah. You, yeah. you ruined. You're my, not, you ruined my frosted flakes. You're so dramatic that my cereal yeah. got soggy. I got so mad. <laughs> that, that, that's a real story. Yeah, you know what? I always, I never had soggy cereal because I ate it at the decent speed. Like, if you ate your cereal so damn slow it got soggy, it's your fault. I was my belief. Yeah. You know what I mean? You yeah, deserve yeah. to have that's true soggy cereal at that point. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. crazy. Did you hear about Google's um, career certificates? What? Oh, we, education. We, we, oh, we, 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 are they moving we, 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 the education? I Finally, think, doing what we were talking about. I think we predicted this. Yeah. I think so. Um, you can get a Google career certificate. Oh. That'll help you get qualified for high-paying, high-growth job fields. Wow. Uh, no college degree required. And um, in at Google, they will treat these career certificates as the equivalent of a four-year degree wow. for related roles. Wow. Yeah, dude. Isn't that great? I, I mean, can uh, for yeah, sure cool. you're going to see all the other big companies follow. Don't oh, you think so? Oh, they ha- uh, oh, it's, they got to be competitive, dude. It's it's this is uh, we've talked about this. This is for sure. A market response because a four-year degree takes forever. Yeah. You're taking a lot of stuff that maybe you don't need for a specialized role. Why aren't companies going to compete like this? I could see Apple doing this. I could see Facebook start doing this. Oh man! And these see these certificates take way less time, are far less expensive. Uh, I think it's going to be a freaking amazing thing. I had such a long conversation with a bunch of people. We were at this party and. Um, it was all about education because like we talked about like forever, like it's completely changing from every facet of, of education. It's mm. just, it's crazy just to watch it all right now. Like what, what time we're in where kids are like, we're, we're all trying to figure this out and piece it together. And I've, I've heard strategies from different parents and I'm, it's very, very interesting. Dude, what's happening. He- hear this. Tell me this is not going to do like, if this goes out and this starts to like spread with other big companies, Tell me this isn't going to destroy private education, like expensive, you know, A hundred percent is going to totally well, disrupt that well, whole thing. Well, check this thing. out. First of all, you can get a scholarship, right? So Google can actually can tell you, hey, yeah. we're going to give you this certificate. But if they don't, each specialization certificate costs $49 a month, yeah. okay? Number one. Number two, uh, this is just with Google. Google has established hiring pipelines with big name employers. So Cognizant, Hulu, K4, Sprint, et cetera, Right. Upon completion of these certificates, you'll have the option to share your certificate with those employers. Wow. So now those employers are going to look at those as well. Beautiful. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just thinking about the do the, do the math on yeah. this. How many people work for Amazon? How many people work for Facebook? How many people work for Google? How many people work for Apple? Yeah. And if this they is all real job placement, if, exact, and if they all jump on board, what will that look like statistically? Dude, yeah, and it's like, dude, we're, we're going to these institutions to get in like serious debt just to dig our way out. Where this is like, you can you know directly go to these companies, and then you have opportunities right away. You don't get yourself in massive debt, dude. It gets better. Okay, jobs. These are some of the some of the courses they have. Job specializations include data analyst. IT support specialist, project manor, manager, and UX designer. Ready for this? Mm-hmm. Each specialization will take three to six months to complete. That's it? No experience is required wow. to enroll. And the corresponding jobs have a minimum medium salary of $50,000. So here you are, three to six months later, you get a certificate that Google will now treat as a four-year degree and their other <laughs> employers that they work with will treat it like a degree. That's amazing. You come out 49 bucks a month. So what's 49 times, so what's 50 times six? Was that 300 bucks? And then you got to, potentially you could qualify for a job. Well, no it, no it, experience in a, required. In a year to two years time, you could have all of them. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see if, if my kid... If, if there's how an young, age, yeah, how young he can be, well, dude. I'm and we're right. gonna, I'm gonna be like, hey man, you know, especially for someone like your kid who's like so ahead of his, so yeah. ahead of his age, dude. Right. Tell me that's not amazing. 
if other companies start to do this, there's everybody's going to be. I mean, this is a good thing. I think. Yeah, I think it's gonna, a really good thing. I think this is going to be a very, very good thing. So it's exciting. Yeah. Anyway, dude, uh, uh, I I did a, a post. Um, actually, uh, I had a, this thought process that led to a post about the the, the personal growth that fitness uh, encourages in people when they stick to it long enough and do it for the right reasons and follow it in a healthy way. And I was thinking about the some of the studies that I've read on. Have you guys seen the studies on people who exercise and eat right and their rates of success in uh, marriage, their rates of success in business, and so on? Have you guys seen? Those? I have not. What does it look like? So people who are who have high satisfaction with their career, people who earn more money than the average person. That's the other one, um, and people who tend to have high satisfaction with their families and marriage a much higher percentage of those people exercise on a regular basis and prioritize a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. So that we've known for a long time. And the argument was, oh, well, those people are already, you know, they have, they've got good practices. Obviously they're successful in business and will life. So it only makes sense that they would prioritize fitness and health. Mm -hmm. I think that the opposite may also play a role, which is the pursuit of fitness done properly in a healthy way, uh, builds and encourages the skills that make you uh, more successful in other aspects of life. Well, it's, uh, there's, so many, there's so many parallels. We talked about this uh, a while back, right, where I, I, I speculated that a majority of that is, or the thing that I think is in common is if you go to the gym or you exercise and diet, you're growth-minded. Mm-hmm. You're trying to improve yourself. So that, that characteristic alone, it probably is a indicator of someone that is more likely to be successful in relationships mm-hmm. yeah. and business. If you're a growth-minded person, I mean, that's w- one of my favorite attributes of someone like Katrina, and it's why our relationship, even though you were 10 years deep in, continues to be better today than it was the first day we started dating was because we continue to grow each other, both of us, right? So, mm-hmm. And we care about that. That's important to each of us. So I think that has a, a big factor to play on why, why these people – and – one of the things you learn in fitness really quick after you've been doing it is that it's a slow process mm-hmm. and there's a lot of failures along the way and it's and inconsistency is so important and setback is part of the part of it so which parallels life right. business relationships I and know. everything else that's exactly what it is in my opinion and i think that you're not born growth minded or fixed minded it's mm-hmm. something that you can train develop you can change right. how you view things and the reason why I think fitness is such an effective way to do this is because your guard is down. Mm-hmm. You're not going in to work out and think to yourself, I'm going to totally change my mindset. I'm going to totally change. Oftentimes, you're like, I just want to get in better shape. Uh, I want to you know, maybe lose some weight and get fit. And then you stick to it long enough, and here's some of the stuff that you figure out. And this is all what determines you know, a growth mindset. You uh, learn how to persevere in the face of failure. If you work out long enough – and you try to fix your nutrition, you are going to fail a lot, especially mm-hmm. in the beginning. And if you stick to it, you learn how to persevere uh, with those failures. Mm-hmm. Here's another one. Effort is required to build new skills. That's all fitness is. All fitness is is you go in and you try and you suck, and then you go in the next time and you still suck, but maybe less a little bit, and you keep going and keep going and keep going. And, it, and eventually you learn this, that, hey, you know what? Uh, if, I, if I put some effort in, I can learn some new skills. Yeah. Um, here's another one. You find inspiration in other people's success. Here's what I notice with people in fitness. When they first start working out, um, they might be a little bit like, oh, that person is just genetically yeah, gifted. gifted or, yeah. But if you stick to it long enough, you know what you end up doing? Mm-hmm. You end up respecting people. Of course. Yeah. That have have good fitness. This yeah. is a, You have true. breakthroughs all the time. Yes. And, and I think, too, like, it, and this kind of goes back to the whole belief system. Like, you come in believing you're something. Like, I was, I, you know, I had all these uh, factors that were given to me at birth that, like, I'm trying to overcome. And you also find out that you can break through. Like, say you're a hard gainer or say you're something that, like, well, I just can't build muscle. But, like, really, you haven't, like put that to the test. You haven't done all those little steps that will actually get you to break through. Now, all of a sudden, wow, I can build muscle. I can break through. Absolutely. Here's a, here's the last one that I think is so powerful. You learn to accept criticism. And, and, and people who've been working out for a long time and know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you're new, you might think, well, what do you mean by that? As you're doing this process, if you are to stick to it long enough, you have to be able to learn how to criticize yourself and accept it. 
and, and, and not be this devastating thing. You also, when you meet other people that work out, can talk with each other about technique and form and how this might not have worked and whatever. And rather than taking it personally, like if when I bef- when I first started working out, if you came up to me and said, "Hey Sal, you need to develop this more than the other because you're not looking balanced." Oh, I would have crushed me. Today, if I'm working out with one of you guys and you say that, it's like, "Okay, like because we're all in this together, we understand the process." So, um it's it's one of the best ways to enter into personal growth. And I think a big one is because it's unassuming. You don't even know it's happening until it's too late. And then you've become... It's hard too. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes it so great when you talk about things like a relationship and business, because that's hard. Mm -hmm. You know, living with someone, the same person for the rest of your life isn't easy. I don't care how great or how much... work. Yeah, it's work. And you have to... And there's a lot of ups and downs and it's working through all that that makes a really strong relationship. And the same thing goes for business. Business is hard. There's a lot of setbacks in life. There's a lot of things that happen that you would have never foreseen. Like you have to learn to enjoy it. Yeah, and adapt. You have to learn to adapt. Mm-hmm. So there's so much. I think so many parallels in training your body that that you start to see and unfold that totally. parallel real life. Totally. And speaking of, you mentioned hard gainers, Justin. Yeah. I want to say this uh, uh, because we are about to start the hard gainer webinar where I talk exclusively to men and women who have trouble building strength and building muscle, maybe more trouble than the average person. You know, you think you're a hard gainer. This webinar is going to be uh, airing and we're going to be on there live uh, a few times this week. So if you want to come and learn about why hard gainers are hard gainers and how to train your body specifically so that it builds muscle, and I'm going to make a statement that's 100% true. This is not me blowing smoke. I have never met a hard gainer that I could not get uh, to build muscle mm-hmm. by applying some of the stuff that I really break down uh, in this webinar. So it's extremely valuable. It's totally free. Um, you go to hardgainerwebinar.com and sign up, and it's unlimited you, to how many people can go on there. Well, last night we had the first one at 5 o'clock. When's the next two, Doug? No, it's, uh, yeah, uh, on Thursday and on Saturday. Okay, All right. perfect. Now, uh, there may be some uh, some replays. Sign up anyway. No matter what, you're going to get great information. It's hardgainerwebinar.com. First question is from Daniel Mesa. One, how possible is it to make muscle gains at 40? Oh, gosh. Uh, so here's the thing. I, so I trained a lot of people towards the end of my career as a trainer that were in advanced age, uh, which I believe is classified as like over 65. I'd are, say, are we in advanced age now? No, we're not. Uh, no, I'm going to use the... <laughs> that, that I'm, was, like, I'm like, man. That was, that was me the last time that I said that. That just snuck right? up on us. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm using that as an example because that's way older than 40. So these, these are typically it's considered anybody over 65 uh, in a fitness uh, you know, context. And I, I would say towards the end of my career, a good 35% of my clients were over the age of 65. So I had a lot of experience training them. And they would often ask me the same question, except they were 70 or 80. Sal, can I get stronger at 75 years old? Or can I build muscle at 75? The day your body loses its ability to adapt to stress is the day that you're dead. Okay, so you never lose the ability to adapt to exercise. Now, your potential can definitely change. You're you're not going to be able to get as strong at 70 as you can at 20, 40, yeah, there's a little bit of a difference, but not much. There's not much of a just it's, there is a difference. Well, I think but that, not much. I think there's a I think there's a big difference in when we're comparing these two things, right? Like a 40 year old who is starting their fitness journey for the first time ever at 40 versus somebody who's trained off and on for a really long time and maybe they've been off for five years and they're training at 40. Because something that I'm finding getting closer to 40 right now is yeah, it's 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 harder to get in the gym and lift and I have the aches and the pains and I have these and maybe like testosterone levels are starting to slowly decline in comparison to what I was when I was 20. So there's those factors. But then there's the 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 positive factor for someone like me who's lifted for so long that I definitely feel like if I get in the gym and I start touching weights again, my body remembers really quick. So there's it depends on the 40-year-old that I'm talking to. Am mm-hmm. I talking to a 40-year-old who's never lifted weights before? Or am I talking to a 40-year-old who has lifting experience, they just haven't got back or they're back on the wagon, right? Well, look, Doug is a great example. Mm. Doug uh, came to me as a client, uh, and he was a self-described hard gainer, says, oh, all I do is gain body fat. I followed every routine. 
I've been consistent forever. The guy was working out since he was in his 20s. He came to me in his late 40s. And through changing the way he trained and training him properly, he didn't just get in, in good shape. He got in the best shape of his life. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, we'll have uh, Andrew post up his before and after. So you could see what he looked like in his late 40s and you'd be blown away. So I, I, I hate saying that, yeah, you might notice some decline. Here's the people that might notice declines, the people that are super high level all the time. Everybody else, you're probably not going to notice because because what you'll notice more is, am I inconsistent? Is my diet poor? Am I getting bad sleep? Now, if you're like at a top level at you know in your mid-20s, 30s, and 40s, then I've been consistent all the time uh, for a long time. I'm being super consistent with diet and exercise. I notice a little bit of decline. Would I notice that at all if I was in and out? I don't think so. I don't, it's, the, it's all about the other factors that make the yeah. Everything. I was gonna say there's other things too that I mean you got. I, I feel like we have to give or defend some you know somebody who's 40 plus that's getting into fitness. You know uh, where you're at at 40 years old. There's other factors besides like I know the question's probably geared towards like hormonally and your body's ability to adapt and all that stuff. All all is is fairly close to the same or equal. And I agree with you. But then when you're 40, you've probably been married, have kids. Mm. Uh, Those are yeah, you have real established patterns, yeah, work, like hardwired patterns. Right, work is a huge priority. You know, yeah. when you're 22, you know, as long as you get your 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 studying in for the week for your test scores and stuff like that, the rest of the time can be focused on yourself and training. That's and like the that. big difference. Yeah. So I I think that, that that you you have to give them some sort of of credit or uh, that it's a little more challenging for someone who's starting at 40 uh, late in their life who has all these other uh, habits established and but good habits, right? Working and doing those things are important. Um, this is also why, and you addressed this in the, the Hard Gainer webinar with Doug and everything, like this is also why I find a full body routine to be so superior is a, a guy who's trying to get into it, or even a girl for that matter, that's trying to get into fitness at 40 years old or older and is trying to follow these kind of body part split routines where they need to train, you know, four, five, six days a week. And be consistent doing that while all these other factors are in play and you don't have the the, the experience of lifting forward definitely can be challenging versus somebody who is lifting a full body routine that maybe only needs to commit to three days inside the gym. A lot of people can make that commitment and be consistent about it. And if they do miss a day, it's not as detrimental to them as far as their progress as it is for somebody who's doing mm. a split routine. You know, what's funny is now that you, you brought up men and women, you made me think of something. The the most fit women I've ever trained in my life, most okay, most women that hire trainers are usually, because personal training is expensive, usually in their 30s or older. You, you rarely ever get a... a 20 something year old uh, client who hires you just because they don't have the finances to afford paying, you know, 50 to a hundred dollars an hour. So most of the female clients are at, over the age of 30, I would say. Mm -hmm. And comparing my female clients in their thirties to the ones in their forties, the ones in their forties got in better shape. And it's not because of the age. It's because I think when the women were in their forties, their kids were older. They're not having kids anymore. Yeah. Then they became more focused. Whereas yeah. the, 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 the moms that I had that were in their thirties, it was harder for them to juggle time and scheduling, and then they got little kids, which takes up more time. So I think that's the biggest factor is the time stuff and the responsibility. I've also noticed too, like even uh, depending 40, 50, 60 uh, year olds that I've trained that like haven't even like lifted weights before ever, they get those newbie gains. Oh yeah, It's definitely something that still happens. It's this phenomenon. Your body's like, wow, what is this? It's a brand new stimulus. So uh, there is a bit of momentum there in the beginning. So it does kind of help give you a little bit of a lift uh, initially. Yeah. I and, and here's the big thing. Uh, the older you get, this is a good, this is kind of cool. The older that you get, uh, if you're consistent with exercise, the, f the further away you are from your peers, the more, the be so in other words, if you were to compare yourself to your peers and you're a, a 20 year old and you work out and you're comparing yourself to other 20 year olds who don't really work out, there's a little bit of a difference. When you're 40, that difference is much bigger. And the older you get, the bigger that difference gets to the point where when you get to your 60s and 70s, if you're exercising consistently, you are independent and they aren't. They can't even take care of themselves half the time and you're fully independent. So that's one of the good things about, you know, getting older. You take care of yourself. Uh, you maintain, 
a, a level of fitness that just totally separates you from your peers. It really oh, yeah. is like one of the, the grass is greener on the other side because it, it, at that age, it just presents different challenges, right? Mm -hmm. I feel I feel like that there, sure, there are some challenges, but it's different than what it was at 25, 30. So both equally diff difficult to build muscle. You got to be a bit smarter with your approach. Right, too. right. Next question is from Magnetic Beauty 101. What do you think of push, pull, and leg routines? Well, this is a perfect transition from that question, right? Because yeah. it this is what I th I love this type of routine. I follow this um, a lot. Like I, this works for me. But if I have a challenge with it, it's if, if I'm having a hard time being really consistent with the gym. If you're somebody who religiously hits the gym four times or five times a week and you never miss a day. Um, then yeah, there's there's nothing wrong with a routine like this. I think it's a, a great routine. If you're getting to every muscle group two to three times a week and you're doing that consistently, I think there's a lot of value in in training this way. Um, as I've gotten older and and other priorities in my life with business and family, uh, it it's become harder and harder for me to train four or five days a week really consistently to run a routine like this. And so I'm back to running a more full body type of routine and it just serves me better. Uh, I know that it, I had a, a, a rough week just two weeks ago where I only trained once, you know, and if I only trained once, I wouldn't want to land on just a, you know, just a leg day or just a, you know, chest and back day. And then I missed the other body parts. Like at least I got a full body routine. My body did not miss getting stimulated. My entire body didn't get miss stimulated that previous week just because I was inconsistent with everything else. Yeah. So for, for you, those of you listening who don't aren't familiar with what this type of routine is. So it's, it's a type of a split routine where you break the body up uh, into body parts and you train different body parts on different days. So a push day uh, refers to typically chest, mm -hmm. shoulders, and triceps. A pull day typically refers to back and biceps. And then of course, leg refers to uh, the legs. Now, if you only work out three days that week, you hit each of those body parts once, mm -hmm. one time. If you do a full body routine and you work out three times that week, you've hit all the body parts three times. So that increased frequency, uh, like Adam's talking about, tends to make it uh, superior. To get the same kind of frequency out of a push-pull routine, a push-pull leg routine, you wouldn't be able to uh, because there's seven days in a week. And so at most, you'd hit each area twice a week. You'd have to make up the difference with volume. Now, I know what the studies say, and the studies say if the volume is the same, there's not that big of a difference. I disagree. I've trained lots and lots of people. I've trained myself. And uh, more frequency, uh, I'd say 80% of the time it's works not, better. It's just not that. It's I mean, even it, nobody ever trains like a study, you know, for six weeks. It just doesn't, ha real life happens. And that's, I mean, that that to me is the real difference maker in the stuff that we talk about on the show is that we always take into consideration like behavior mm -hmm. and the behaviors that I've seen training tons of people for this long is that, and, and myself, who's a fit, who's a fit, who's supposed to be a fitness fanatic. Yeah. Life happens. And sometimes I only get to the gym once in a week. And if I'm going to do that, I'd much rather not be in the middle of my push pull root split routine. I'd much rather be doing a full body so that, like I said, at least everything is getting touched. Otherwise, you have these weeks where inconsistency might happen, and then what do you do when you start over again? And everybody tends to start over at the, either the beginning of the push pull routine, or they start over on the muscle group that they love training. It's just it's yeah. it's, it's 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 behaviors. Yeah, but here's the here's the point that I want to make though. Let's just say you're right. This doesn't happen in real life, but let's just pretend that it's perfect. Push pull legs versus full body. Everything's perfect. So uh, let's compare the two. Here's why I still think more frequency is better for most people. You get to practice the exercises more often. Yeah. So even though the volume might be controlled for, you might hit your legs twice a week, so you're squatting twice a week, which is a very complex exercise. And a lot of the gains you get from a squat is the central nervous system adaptation, the practicing of the exercise. A full body routine means you can practice squatting at least three times that week. So it's that practice element that everybody forgets mm -hmm. uh, that I think is extremely important. And if you're super advanced, that might be not as important. But like I said, this is my 100% belief. About 80 to 85% of everybody listening right now is going to get better results across the board 
on a full body routine than they would on any kind of a split, including a push pull leg routine. And by the way, yes, push pull leg and those kind they can be effective. I mean, we have a program that follows a split called MAP Split. Mm -hmm. But for most people, the full body just always works out better. But it's still like in progression after aesthetic, which like this is, you know, like uh, this is something a little bit more advanced. And so I I look at it like that. I look at it like an advanced technique. Like you're mentioning the practicing element. That's a huge component. You got to really get familiar with all these exercises and a much better approach uh, for doing that is the full body routines. Next question is from Epic Mantra Fitness. What are your thoughts on the statement, you can't judge someone's health by looking at them? Um, I would say this. I would say you can you can see a, a certain amount of someone's health, right? You can't see everything. But there is a certain amount of someone's health you can see by looking at them. But there's a caveat. Hmm. Uh, what is your filter? Are you yourself a healthy person? So I'll explain what I mean. If you, if you had asked me, does someone look healthy when I was uh, in my late teens, yeah. very insecure, super into bodybuilding, I just needed to build muscle because I hated being skinny, all that stuff, and you showed me a you know, ultra-ripped, shredded, muscular person, I would have been like, yes, that's healthy. Today, uh, oftentimes, I can see somebody that looks like that, and I know, yeah. no, they don't look healthy. So it's the person who's looking. And, and here's your evidence right here, okay? You got so many people that do so many things to their body to make them look better, but in reality, they, they're, it's all fake and false, everything from plastic surgery to anabolic steroids and drugs and all that stuff, yeah. that it, you know, it just becomes extreme. And because so many other people are unhealthy, they look at that and they think they're attractive. So if you're, if you're, if you're a healthy person, you can usually see uh, a, a decent amount of someone's health simply by looking at. Of course, it's not one hundred percent though. Well, and I also think too, like is this this is totally different when you're looking at pictures versus somebody in real life. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, it, there's just so many examples of filters and ways that people have hid, uh, you know, dark eye circles and you know, like v- real visible signs, uh, you know, that their body is fighting something internally. And I think that, I mean, this is a natural thing. I think that people have uh, that, you know, that that's in our DNA to where we can see somebody and we could see uh, visible signs of, of, of unhealth. That's something that like, you know, we're, we're sort of geared towards, especially when we're, we're going to, uh, uh, you know, you know, reproduce with somebody. And, and that, that's something that, uh, I think that it, it's, it's weird that you would deny the fact that like, we're not constantly judging people based upon, uh, what they're presenting. Uh, so I, I think that, uh, you know, in, in, and I, I don't know if, the, if this is inferring, uh, you know, the, the whole weight at any size being healthy and all that kind of stuff. Like if that's being thrown in the mix, because, uh, that's a totally different conversation. I don't, I don't think we can. I, just because, um, I mean, you you just mentioned a, a great point, Sal, is that if you asked me when I was 20-something years old, which, by the way, already schooling behind me, years of training people, a fitness professional, think I know a lot about it, I would still have been way off on it. So I think that the majority of people cannot judge this. We have just, and we've been conditioned to look at someone's body and assume that because they look a certain way that they are considered healthy. Look at the covers of Shave Magazine, Men's Health, Mm -hmm. Muscle and Fitness, uh, your Instagram celebrities, celebrities in general, like everything that we've been told, like this is an example of health many times. And much of what we used to talk about when we first started Mind Pump was uncovering this, Mm -hmm. was that your fitness professional or this person who we are highlighting as the pinnacle of health Mm -hmm. is not healthy at all. They're taking anabolic steroids. They have a terrible relationship with their their body image. They have a terrible relationship with their friends, their family. There are so many things that encompass health that you can't see. And I also know what I what I've dealt with personally myself. I have to be in. If I looked at the last twenty years, I have to be in the the lower not definitely not the worst at all, but I, I would say I'm in the the lower percentile of what I would consider my best aesthetic shape. But I have to say that I'm probably in the best overall health shape I've ever been in my life because of the other balances, my, my, my financial health, my spiritual health, my relationship health with my family, with my friends, the job that I'm doing, the things that I'm, the, the other aspects that take care of and encompass health in my life, meditation, reading, all these things that I was not doing to take care mm-hmm. of my, my complete spectrum of health. 
I wasn't doing before. But if you look, if we were to take my shirt off and show a picture of me versus what I look like just six years ago, someone would be like, oh my God, Adam is right. so unhealthy now compared to what he used to you be. You know what's funny? I would, yeah, I would agree with like the general person for sure. I don't think like a lot of no people way. pick up on those no, signs. No, or even like, I would have trouble. Or even aware of it. I do think there's ways to learn that. And that's mm -hmm. something that we've done as health professionals. We've learned all those signs and symptoms. Mm -hmm. And like as a professional, you could point out just by the posture of something somebody too a lot of times whether or not they're ill uh or they have visible signs that their skin is you know like looks a certain color or something like that yeah you're a healthy person would be able to see that you're healthy you right. know mm. it really depends on your they got to be really healthy though well, in order to do that what though. i'm saying is you're right but they got to be educated well too. look at what we consider health uh, youth that's what we consider as healthy anything that looks young so a woman that has her hair colored so that there's no grays well we you know the the average unhealthy person would say, well, they're healthier, right? Uh, you know, a big fake butt. Some people might be like, oh, yeah, she looks healthy. Or, you know, a guy that's all roided out and got a six-pack or whatever. Yeah. yeah, he looks healthy. So it takes a, a healthy filter to be able to look at someone and say, are they really, really healthy uh, overall? And there's a lot you could tell by meeting someone and talking to them, too. Sometimes you look at someone and physically mm – -hmm. They seem pretty healthy. You start talking to them, you're like, wow. Well, especially the mental health aspect. Yes. That you I, mentioned. Like, like, yeah, yeah, that's really hard to see, obviously, unless you're like in a room with them talking for right, a while. Right, right. So, okay, a fun, fun game for us to play then right now, okay? Uh, of our other friends and peers in our space. Oh, gosh. Who think, name two or three people that come to mind right away that you think of like really embody or encompass like full spectrum health that are really healthy that we've seen and hung out with in person. Okay, now- uh, I've got two right away that come to mind. Now, nobody's perfect, so well, we're not going like, to- No, no. I, I don't want to give like an example and then and then think, oh, this person's perfect. You mean just people that we know that you meet and you go, well, this person's- Well, generally. yeah, we're, we're sitting here, we're, we're, we're making a claim right now that we can look at somebody and say that they, they are healthy and they embody health. Yeah. And so I'll give you mine since I'm the one who started. It came out there like- Two friends of ours that I I look at every time I see them in person, I they just they they glow of health to me, and mm. that's Max Lugavir and Ben Greenfield. Mm. Yeah, I mean Ben has to have some of the, the the craziest looking skin and hair, and when you're in person with him, it looks crazy. Mm -hmm. He looks ten years younger than what he really is, and he doesn't seem to age. We've known each other now for six yeah, years. I was going to say Paul Check on some level. Yeah. Paul, would be, yeah. Paul would be another one, yeah, right? Paul, I would say, I mean, and maybe I'm cheating here, but I'd put Doug uh, in Doug, that category. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Doug's Doug, up absolutely. there. And now I'm That's not fair. We see him every day. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know him better, right, than anybody. Yeah. And I, I'm counting all of it, right? All of the, the, the just mental health and, and all, spiritual health. I'd say Serene, health. too. So and Doug, yeah. Serene, who does, who's on our YouTube yeah. channel, when you meet her, she seems like a very secure, vibrant. healthy, yeah. vibrant um, individual. But yeah, if you have the if you have unhealthy filter on, you know if you got glasses on that you, through your own insecurities and your own you know misconceptions of what health looks like, you're not going to see health. You're going to see your own un, you know uh, unhealthy um, filter through at, uh, with other people. And that's my case. Why I don't think anyone can judge it. I think it would be hard for us as trained yeah. professionals, seen tons of examples. But like Justin alluded to, there's other things that that encompass health. That even our eyes can't necessarily see. Like I, I threw out someone's name, like Ben. For all I know, Ben is like internally suppressing all this shit inside of him that he doesn't feel like he's himself or he's going through imposter. I can't yeah. tell that. I got someone, Arthur mm -hmm. Brooks. Arthur Brooks, to yeah. me, when you talk to him and meet him and see him, and uh, he, he comes across a very, very calm demeanor. Yes, yeah, a very, very good, poised. generally balanced, yeah. uh, healthy uh, individual. I, that's that's one example. I well, what I what I love, why I wanted to do this is that I guarantee you that there's we didn't name you know a hundred people that look to the average person of that we've that have been on this podcast that they look like the healthiest, the most ripped, the most fit. And like they would be in that category, and we named off kind of average looking kind of bodies. I mean, Ben's a little more ripped and lean. Yeah, Ben's than, looking pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, he look. Yeah, he <laughs> looks pretty crazy right now, but not crazy crazy. Not like he's to old. the average person. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, everybody else, Max, not so much. Paul Check. Uh, I mean, oh, well, Paul Check, considering his age. Yeah, that that dude is, doesn't even right. make sense. Next question is from Hurricane Shaker. How do you set up the Quok episodes? How do you choose the questions? How do you prepare your answers? And when do you find out what the questions will be? There's very little. Right. Are we going to be real honest yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think I think it's important because I think uh, we don't cherry pick questions. It's really 
extremely random. Uh, it's literally which one Whatever of us speaks to us. Which one of us three gets to it first? Like yeah. you know, like we all are always doing uh, lots of different projects, and so when we come in the office first thing in the morning, uh, Sal might be you know on the phone with his book editor at the time. Justin may be booking something with Mall stuff. Doug's always got something going on, so I might go like, oh, I see that the guys are all really busy. Let me be the one to get on here real quick and pick you know, four questions. I, I tend to try and pick personally, I tend to try and pick questions that get a lot of likes, meaning that other people want to hear us talk about it. So I, I something that got no likes or nobody really, except for that one person wants to hear it. I try and pick the ones that there's more than one person that's like wanting to hear the answer to that, but there's really no rhyme or reason of, of how we choose them. We do. And, and then the other guys don't know. Like these and these questions that we have right now, I picked these this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, Sal and Justin got zero time to prep. No one has prime for prep, so we don't prep yeah. our answers. No, I think that there, there may be some benefit to prepping a little bit, just looking at the question five minutes before so you can kind of get your, your what you're going to say organized. But really, uh, I like the fact that, you know, we, what comes out is our first experience. So it turns into a good discussion. By the way, for those of you who are have never asked us a question for these episodes, it's super easy. You go to the uh, Mind Pump uh, Instagram page. It's Mind Pump Media. And then go to the QA. It's Q-U-A-H uh, meme. And right underneath, uh, post your question. And if you do it every week, I think we post them. How many times a week do we yeah. post them? The Once? odds are in your favor. Yeah. yeah. Especially if it's thought-provoking. I think, too, like we just... Uh, we revisit a lot of like similar topics, but if we've done it like recently, we try to avoid like the redundancy of it. But I know people get something out of us going back over a topic in, in more depth. So we, we look for opportunities to do that uh, or but mainly it's interesting questions. It's ones that are like thought provoking or, uh, you know, obviously related to health and fitness. Are, those are the best. Yeah. And it, here's the other thing, too. Um, when we first started doing those, we thought to ourselves, well, was, people are going to be asking a lot of the same questions over and over again. But then we we remembered what it was like to be a trainer. Yeah, and, and here's the answer, thing: I answer the same question a thousand times to the same person. Yeah, yeah. you know totally. when you're when you're working with somebody about and you're having you're talking about, about changing their behaviors and changing the way they eat and how they should become active. And they've never done it before. They've never been consistent before. It's a it's it's a lot of over the over over and over again conversations. Many times said differently, uh, maybe introduced differently, using different you know, examples, telling different stories. And eventually the person really understands well, that's what just, you're trying to say. This is just it. Like uh, this happened many times in my career and we see this happen today still with these quads. Like if you're somebody who's listened to every single episode since day one, you pretty much know our stance on everything. But every time we have to revisit something that's similar to something we've talked about before, somebody shares something different or we we convey the message a little bit different and i don't i remember all the time training clients where i know i said this thing like 10 times i've answered this question 10 times but it was the way i answered it on the 10th time yes that like that hit that hit a chord yeah. for them that right. was like oh shit that makes total sense or it just it related to something in their life where the light bulb went off and then they now and that's what, how we look at these is that yeah there's so, every one of these questions we've answered somewhat like this before there's nothing in here that's completely yeah, many times yeah many times over but because it's worded different it's asked by a different person and we've maybe not addressed it in, in six months or a year mm -hmm. we we answer it and then in hopes that there's, you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of people that are listening this time that go like, oh, oh, I get it now. Yes, the goal is to create aha moments uh, for people listening, and the goal is also to strengthen and reinforce those moments over time. So one of the best things you could do, and this is, again, this is experience with working with a trainer, uh, we're, excuse me, working with clients as a trainer, is this. You listen to the podcast, listen to the questions, if you see that the same question comes up, keep going, keep listening over and over and over and over and over again. And what will end up happening is little by little, you will change the way you think about yourself. You will change the way you think about exercise and not just from a outside, oh, I know this answer. I know what they're going to say, but I mean really knowing and adopting it as part of uh, you know how you treat yourself, how you exercise um, and how you feed yourself. And so that's really the goal uh, with these questions. And so if you haven't asked this one, go to the, the mind pump, uh, media official page, post questions. And if you do it every week, I guarantee at some point we'll pick your question, 
um, and answer it for you. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. So come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. Also, I mentioned Instagram. We have the official Mind Pump media page, but we also have personal pages. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. I remember having this conversation with clients and uh, I would frustrate them sometimes, right? They would ask me questions, and especially when they first hire me. Uh, which diet is the most effective? Like, what's the most effective strategy? Mm -hmm. And I'd say, okay. Uh, what, what looks like what you're doing right yeah, now? I'd say, what do you mean, what do you mean by effective? Mm -hmm. It depends. What do you mm -hmm. mean by effective? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, I just want to lose this body.